What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through today's MLB slate. We've got a big one. And uh, I'm coming off of a decent night. I, I, I made some money on DraftKings. I didn't. I only played a couple lineups on FanDuel, but didn't uh, didn't get anything there. Uh, I was right about it. Wish I would have a little, committed a little harder to the Pittsburgh side of things, but uh, that certainly worked out pretty well. And uh, you know, some of the other some of the other plays worked out well. And we and obviously the spending up for pitching seemed to make the most sense uh, and rotating the four pitchers. So definitely feel good about last night. But uh, you know, one of those where it could have been better. Uh, couldn't have been that much worse. So, so just, just a good night, but she how'd you do? And then let's jump into the slate. Yeah. I lost on DraftKings, but at least I lost on FanDuel. So that's my, that's, <laughs> that's my, yeah. So I did, I did not do well in baseball yesterday, but I did well in tennis. So there's always, there's always, that's a good thing to play multiple sports. You can always, yep. you can always, always some kind of positive you can focus on. Right. Um, uh, and I'm ready to get after it today. Yeah, I want to give a quick shout out, by the way, I didn't say it before, but to Rody for uh, yes. taking down the live final seat, another, our, the live final monster. Good congratulations to Rody. Uh, really happy for him and uh, hopefully start another, another big swing. He, you know, it, we, we get streaky in baseball, especially Rody and I. So uh, maybe this will start another big, a big stretch for Rody to start taking down some big ones. So congrats, man. And uh, yeah, great job. So all right, Sheets. So we let's let's go game by game here. Why don't we pull up your screen? Well, you know, we have a couple of minutes. So I wanted to not yeah. vent a little bit. I wanted to. Uh, th this is something that comes up a lot. Back when I used to, uh, back when I used to play poker, um, every once in a while I would watch a video of, um, you know, uh, some kind of instructional video. Um, and as I got better, you know, I watched the more advanced stuff. You know, and and even after I was teaching, I was still watching stuff, and. When I would sometimes I would watch something that was so involved that I didn't know whether it motivated me to play more or just to quit. You know what I mean? Like I was I was like, this is really like how deep people are now. And I'm really going to try to compete with these people. And then it was it, it was Cliff. He was saying, dude, don't 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 overthink it. OK, it's not as it's never as complicated as you think it is just because it's just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's right. You know, and 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 half the time that they talk about all this deep stuff that goes into their decisions, it really doesn't. And they, they, they come up after the fact. And once in a while, in every in any kind of discipline, I kind of kind of feel that way. You know, they're like, oh, my God, this guy's like, thinking like eight levels deep. Is that the way everybody's thinking now? Should I just not even play if these are the people that I'm kind of up against? Right. And I say that as, as kind of background because um, I, I want to recommend something, but I want to recommend it with a little bit of trepidation. So. So, you know, we're kind of like partners, so with Saber Sim. So I watch the Saber Sim videos from time to time. And they have this whole series on, on their YouTube channel called like Behind the Sims, where they talk about contest selection or whatever. And they're going into such insane detail about, about stuff, you know? And, 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 and halfway through, I'm watching, I'm like, like, these people are so freaking smart, you know? And they're so deep. I mean, how am I playing DFS against these freaking people? And then I, I step back and I wait. I just remember Cliff saying, no, don't, 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 don't overthink. Don't think it's like it's, it's that much rocket science. You know, don't, 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 yep. don't overanalyze it. Just do, just do your thing. You know, so, so I'll recommend it to you, but, but don't, but don't, but don't start thinking that you're stupid if you don't understand like half the stuff that they're talking about. Right. Um, uh, because there is a way to overanalyze. There is a way to get too deep into these things. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. And uh, I think that that is definitely uh, something that happens in all aspects. I also think that when it comes to sports talk in general, not talking about the Saberson thing, I just noticed how many, I mean, so Andrew Wiggins was the most important player other than Steph Curry in the NBA final, certainly the second best player. And, and, and I remember podcasts from the guys who know the most about the NBA saying, I don't think Andrew Wiggins could be the fifth best player on a championship team. Andrew Wiggins, the biggest bust ever. Well, the guy's 26 years old in, in all these sports that we talk about. And the same thing we say, oh, this pitcher sucks. He's over the hill and all this stuff. We, you know, and, and we're at that part of the season where you're really starting to see that people have, some people have uh, gone back, some people have, have progressed and it, just don't think that everybody has it all figured out the way that they sound like they do. That's another, that's a sort of a side note, but that's something I want to throw in there. Um, you, Sheets missed a couple, you missed a couple of my rants about some of the other shows that were out there just talking about how you couldn't talk about lock buttoning hitters who were batting sixth and stuff. Like, I'm just like, there's no such thing as lock buttoning a hitter, like in baseball. <laughs> And they were talking about doing it in 150 lineups. I'm like, that's just the, if you do that, if you, if you play 150 lineups and you're playing the same hitter in every lineup, you're just, you're automatically a losing player. Um, all right, Sheets, let's talk about this slate. Yeah, let me pull my screen up. Yeah. Um, it's a big one. So uh, it may take us a minute to get through. Ooh, yeah, we got, we got it. We got it. I got it. Yeah. 
I don't have to be anywhere until like 1.30. I'm, I'm in good shape. Okay, so the first the first one game of the day, though, we've got a, an interesting one because, like, I don't – so I, I'm on the less stacking against Fetty in general than most people are. Uh, the guy keeps the ball on the ground. He's one of the more extreme ground ball pitchers in baseball. Uh, the, the, the numbers will tell you to play to play Baltimore here today. I'm going to recommend that you don't fully stack Baltimore, but I, I don't mind a mini stack. That's just my personal take. Uh, Trey Mancini specifically is way too cheap. At, so they, they just rotate who they're going to make too cheap on Baltimore. It feels like to me these days, but I, I like a mini so, stack. So is always over five K. Yeah, well, although the, earlier this year he got down in the threes for a while. Right. Um, I am going to, however, recommend taking a shot against Jordan Lyles here again. <laughs> um, again, well, some things have been better this year. If you're going to compare him to guys like Fetty, you can run on Lyles. Uh, Lyles gives up more power than Fetty does. Lyles can get more. Lyles can get wild as well. Doesn't keep the ball on the ground as much. All of these things, I do think Washington, I think this whole game makes sense, you know, from just, a, it's also 83 degrees with the wind blowing out. It's, you know, only a little bit to left feet, left center. Um, it feels like a good game to target. I, I think mostly it's going to be three mans for me for Baltimore. I, I, I'm not going to say I won't throw in a four or five somewhere, but I like the three mans better. And I, and I like the, the full stack for Washington. I think interestingly, um, the, the, the slate itself it's, it's kind of not like last night, you know, I, I think it's not, it's, I think it's a hitting slate yep. and not necessarily a pitching slate. Um, not that there's no pitching, you know what I mean? But I think that the, that the, it's not about, well, if we just make sure we take those top pitchers and we have to take a bad hitting team, then we just do it. Um, I think you do want to, you know, <laughs> make sure you get good, hit, good hitting options. Um, I, I actually found um, Fetty as like a, third tier sp2 but when i thought about it i didn't know if that, that but then i found other guys that went with more upside okay but this mm -hmm. is these are my thought process going into it um and then when i kind of ran some early builds i'm actually agreeing with you a little bit I, i'm getting some washington um in my uh in my early builds not, not they're not my top stack by any stretch of the imagination i'm certainly getting to them mm -hmm. um so I, I guess i'm sort of agree with you i like a little bit of washington I'm not getting to Baltimore, um, either DraftKings or FanDuel, and I'm I'm just not. I'm probably going to end up just not playing either pitcher at all. Yeah, I understand it. Um, it's it, it, I, I could see an argument even being made for Lyles, even all the things I say about him. I like to pick on him and stuff, but you know he's actually been better this year. He has six K, so it's Washington, who we've seen. You know, just the lineup drops off after the top quite a bit, so. Uh, I would recommend if you do play Washington to try to focus on the guys in the earlier part of the lineup because uh, it really does fall off after those guys. <laughs> All right. Now we have a, an interesting situation in, uh, over in Pittsburgh because so because someone explained to me why no one wanted to play Contreras at like 5K on these similar types of slates. And now he's supposed to be 20 percent owned at 7400. And I actually like Contreras. It just feels a little bit. It is the Cubs. Um, you do have a great extreme pitchers umpire and Phil Cuzzy, one of the better ones in baseball at, as, as of right now. I, I also think you could make a really good argument here for playing, uh, playing Pittsburgh. You've seen, I mean, talk about, you want to hear some, some crazy stats. I think, I, I believe this is their Swarmer's first starts. His starts of this year so far, he's given up, <laughs> this is not 10 home runs in 18 and two third innings. So basically in two games, he's given up 10 home runs. That's pretty amazing to do. That's almost impossible for a start. You don't ever see that. He hasn't had, had a game without a home run. So even on a big slate, I'm finding myself a little bit drawn to maybe going back to the well a little bit with some of these Pittsburgh guys. And they also work out from a value standpoint. So I think this is, you know, and, and, and as opposed to yesterday where we're 70 degrees in Pittsburgh, it's now 90 degrees with the wind blowing out to left. So I am on board with taking some shots back on these cheap Pittsburgh guys. I think they make for a great cheap stack. So I'm going to have them as my, one of my top, maybe my top cheap stack. I mean, you've got Sawinski bat, who we're assuming that would bat third and he's 2.1 K Vogelbach at 2.5 Shavis at, at 2.6. If you don't want to play Vogelbach, same position, then you've got O'Neill Cruz again, who knows where they bat him. I'm guessing six, then you, you can always fill it out with Brian Reynolds or Cabrian Hayes. So this whole lineup makes a lot of sense. And I don't, the only difference is today, Oddly enough, on a big slate, you're going to actually see them a little bit more owned with the exception of O'Neill Cruz, who will probably be less owned than he was yesterday, um, but more owned than he's currently being projected. I like Pittsburgh. I am probably not going to go with Contreras, even though I believe in, that he's talented. That's just where I'm at on this game. How about you? 
Yeah, um, I uh, I have Pittsburgh rated as an extreme. It's, it's like the best value stack by like a lot. Um, like this is a value stack that is like it's one of the better ones we've seen of the year based on the numbers, right? Yeah, it's like one of those. And uh, the, once again, though, um, on a slate that you don't, you don't, I don't know if you're going to need them. You know, it's weird. Um, I don't think you're going to. I don't know if you're going to need to pay up for. There's no Coles, Burns, and 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 whatever. Uh, whoever the other guy was from last night. Um, I, and, and McClanahan on the slate. So I don't know if you're going to need to save the money to play Pittsburgh. And I will say this, that, um, you know, the, the, the cruise uh, off of that performance last night, it's still 2K. What, what is his ownership going to be? You know what I mean? Well, like, I think it's going to be, the thing is he was like, he ended up being really popular last night. Um, but I, 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 I don't know where he'll end up tonight, to be honest. I mean, he is a talented kid. For sure. As I mentioned before, it's not, not that it applies to anything with uh, hitting, but he did throw the hard. He, he had the hard, the first ground ball of the game. He had the hardest throw of any infielder this season. He threw a 96.4, I believe it was, now that I look it up. Um, but he's, he's a very talented kid. So I don't know where he, how, how popular he'll be, but I'm guessing it'll be fairly, it'll be much more popular than he's looking at projections. I promise you that. Because yeah. right now I've, I'm looking at like one in 4% owned. <laughs> um, I don't believe it. I'm not buying um, that either. I, 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 uh, I happen to like um, Contreras as well. I mean, I have, I have like a couple of, couple of like kind of SP two ish type prices and he's one of them. And I, I consider him uh, one of the, one of the two that I would consider using actually, if I was going to pay down. And, and um, uh, so I'm kind of seeing what you're seeing um, and that he will probably will be owned. The uh, I'm also it's funny I, so I've seen Pittsburgh as a as a big um, as a big uh, what call it's a big value stack but when I ran some 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 Sabres and stuff and this also makes sense when you think about it I am getting some Cubs mm-hmm. um, because I guess of the ownership that this guy might 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 garner from Pittsburgh so um, I'm probably going to end up I have a feeling I'm just going to end up not playing Pittsburgh. Um, just because the way I'm going to end up going in my pitching, I think I'm going to end up just playing one of the more expensive, you know, stacks like Boston, Houston, Angels, mm-hmm. Toronto, something like that. You know, so so I don't think I'm going to need to play Pittsburgh, but I could certainly, I certainly wouldn't argue with them because they just rate as such strong plays given their given their price. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, you ready to move on to your Yankees in Tampa? Yep. All right, so. This is a weird situation. Nestor Cortez on a, what, a small slate yesterday would have gotten almost no ownership. And today he would get, he's going to get a lot. <laughs> um, 10.4. I don't love paying 10.4 for him in general. He's been good specifically against Tampa. <laughs> um, forever, actually. Uh, I don't know. I, I, yes, he's on my list. That's pretty much all I have in this game, and I'm not all that excited about the Cortez thing at shock. Um, yeah, I have Cortez as kind of like second tier. Um, Tampa's lineup is trash right now, um, so they're uh, trash, and they somehow win games. Like it's bizarre. I <laughs> mean, the Yankees got greedy. They went for the no hitter with uh, <laughs> yeah. in the, in the, in the, in for his 114 pitch or 112 pitch or something with Cole. Um, yeah. They they fought. Um, but I do have Cortez as, 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 as up there. I'm probably not going to do it though. Um, again, I think, I, I think, I think I'm talking myself into what I'm doing already. Um, but, uh, he's certainly going to rate as a good play and I'm not going to argue with people that want to play him. I'm probably going to end up elsewhere. And I definitely have neither of the hitting in this game. Yeah. Don't see any, quite any reason again if you want to take a, a one-off of judge or stanton especially yep. i would take that shot against the lefty and then anthony rizzo who apparently just homers every day now i guess you can yeah i know right <laughs> it's crazy yeah it doesn't matter and it's true i've always known about rizzo you don't don't bother with lefties but rizzo has become i mean he's what is he fourth in the league in home runs this year so he's 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 been the best version of anthony rizzo we've ever seen and playing in yankee stadium well we knew it would give him a boost i i I think the boost came a little bit later than we thought. I thought it, we thought it would happen last year, and this year he's he's taking advantage. Although he's not obviously at Yankee Stadium tonight. Well, um, in the next game, if you if you didn't have any luck uh, with the kind of with with the, with the cutesy cheapo Detroit stack yesterday, you get a chance to play him again. Um, 
they're they're looking to be they're looking like a similar it's not similar because the slate's different you know what i mean like mm. they, they, they're, they're they're similarly valued I, mean, I have them as my second best point per dollar stack behind pittsburgh again um but i just don't think i'm gonna do it you know i i, I think rich, rich hill's good enough I and mean, why why am i doing that why am i playing detroit i don't know i don't think i have to mm -hmm. um and hey, if the Boston didn't get you enough runs last night, um, some people thought they should have gotten more. Um, then you get to play them again, and they, you know, are again. Uh, are they the best stack? I don't know. Certainly could argue it. Mm -hmm. um, they're certainly one of them. Mm -hmm. So Boston will be similarly chalky they were last night, um, and they're just, they're they're a good play. And same disclaimers I always give. You're gonna play Boston. Don't play like Minaya and uh, Cortez, you know what I mean? Or don't play Minaya and uh, Contreras, you know, if you're going to play, uh, you're going to play Boston, try to do something else. But uh, they certainly look like a very strong offensive selection for them. Yeah. So my, here's the, the arguments against Boston. If we want to try and make them um, brisky has actually been pretty good. His last few starts, including a ton okay. of tough matchups. I mean, he, he was really good against the Yankees. Then he was really good against the Blue Jays. Then he was really good against Texas. Um, and was, was, you know, he, he does, he does look like a, a guy who's going to profile to give up a lot of home runs. And that is something that, that even if you're not playing Boston, maybe you want to consider, but I, I, I do think Boston is one of the stacks and another, another thing that maybe wins sort of across the field, but somewhat in from left. And it's only 70 degrees in Boston when we have some games with 90 degree weather today. So these are the, these are just the things you look at. If you think the team's going to be too chalky, I don't think Boston, I mean, they're going to be chalky. But not, I mean, it's, it's a big slate, so I don't think you need to like overly worry about it. But I do, I do like Boston at, at, at first glance. And then you, if you get past Brisky, you've got a, a lovely bullpen to try and tee off on. So I, I'm not as high on the, the Pittsburgh side for uh, the Detroit side. Another, another thing to go, we have another pitcher, extreme pitchers umpire in this game. So another, if you wanted to fade Boston, another maybe thing you could look at. But I, I do think Boston makes some sense. And I think that even if you're not playing the Tigers, well, I don't want to stack them. Like Haas, if, assuming that he bats cleanup at 3.2 is a, is a great value. You've got Grossman at the top of the lineup at 2.2. You've got, I mean, I don't think I'm going to play Miggy at using a first base spot on this slate, but he's only 2.6. There's just, everybody's just so cheap. It really depends on how the lineup shakes out. But I, I think that including some Pittsburgh guys, some Detroit guys is fine. I just don't think I'm fully stacking them today. That's just where I'm at. Um, all right, let's talk about Atlanta and San Francisco. Oh, you get another chance to play Strider. It throws at 100. Mm -hmm. um, fairly priced. Um, I, I, I think he's going to get owned. Uh, I, don't, I don't see that in my early look, but uh, he strikes out every, every, other, every, every guy faces. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. Every guy gets out, he strikes out. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and uh, not that San Francisco is the worst team in the world, but I mean, oh. you throw it. You throw it a hundred. I mean, you're going to strike people out. You know what I mean? That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely like him as an SP two, um, maybe even an SP one, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could play a con I could play a Contreras Strider lineup and be totally content. Mm -hmm. I, I'd, be, I'd be into that. Um, if I want to fade Manai and some of the other, you know, some of the other pitchers like that. So, uh, and then Atlanta mm, don't quite make it for me on the list. Um, so for me, it's like Strider or, or nothing. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one because I, I think so. So Strider threw 106 pitches his last outings for those people worried about amazing. Uh, yeah. How many pitches he's going to throw. Uh, he's got a six and a half K prop 8,600 certainly seems reasonable. I, I do agree with you that it doesn't make sense why he's getting no ownership. I think there may be some sticker shock there. And they really tried to get him that, that quality start in the last one. San Francisco is a pesky team, but they haven't seen him before. And I'm as of the, of, as far as I'm concerned, the pitchers we've talked about so far, he's probably the one I, I like the most. I want to, I want to shoot for that upside, that double digit strikeout game. And yeah. he is a guy, if you haven't faced him before, that, that can happen. Uh, Discalfani is a guy who I used to defend. I, I don't really know what stage he's at right now. And his, you know, he's, he's not going to pitch very long. It's probably going to be more of a bullpen ish game because he's just coming back. Hasn't pitched since April. Um, I, so you can't really play Discalfani, but if we hear, I, I, I don't know. I, I do think there is some argument for these Atlanta guys because, the, because of their price, they're going to be hard to own and it's Atlanta. Um, it's a, obviously a, extremely powerful offense 
and it's 95 degrees with a little wind blowing out to right center, which might even be too hot, by the way. It might be a reason not to play Strider, but I, I'm sort of intrigued by this Atlanta team. I'm going to put them as one of my early look top stacks just because I think that I'll take the weather. I'll take the fact that it's a fairly uh, somewhat of a who knows with this Galfani, maybe he's going to throw whatever pitches no matter what, which means even if he struggles, they'll probably let, let him, you know, pitch just to get loose. Um, but yeah, so I'm sort of stuck on this one. I do have Atlanta as one of the stacks that I'm interested in. Um, I have them behind Boston a little bit, but this weather, the, the, these, these heat waves, when they, when they happen out there, I don't know, the ball tends to just fly. So I'm, I'm definitely interested in Atlanta a little bit, but I, I don't know where they're going to stack, stack up for me by the end of this. All right. You ready for the next one, which is, I believe, Cleveland, Minnesota. What do you got? Yeah. Here? Um, you like, you like Ryan at all? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really getting a much of the, much of those pitchers here. Um, but I, I, I will, I will uh, recommend Minnesota a little bit as far mm -hmm. as hitting goes. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm at. I'm at, I'm not quite getting to Ryan and I'm sort of getting to Minnesota. Yeah. So the, the question with Ryan is going to be, so he, you know, he didn't pitch for a couple of weeks was on the injured list, yep. came back and didn't pitch very well against Seattle. If I, if I felt like he was fully stretched out, even against a low strikeout team in Cleveland, I think I would have some more interest. He's on my list, but he's not, he, it, it feels like a strider over, over him might be a better decision. You know, it's basically the same price. Yeah. Price point. Uh, if they were both fully ramped up and I, and Joe Ryan hadn't had those couple weeks off and wasn't still, you know, potentially, you know, being careful with him with an injury or something like that. Although you could make the argument with strider, they're not going to let him throw hundred pitches back to back games. That's possible too. Um, but both these guys are definitely, you know, superstar talents with, with massive upside. So I'm always going to have some interest in these guys, but on a giant slate, maybe not. Savale uh, to try and pick on him is, 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 is okay. Uh, I'm okay with it. I don't feel great about it. He's been, you know, two out of his last three starts was really solid. Struggled a little bit with Minnesota last time he, he faced them. Doesn't walk a ton of guys and historically has walked a few more this year. I'm open to Minnesota as a stack and especially, you know, obviously it all starts with Buxton in general, but I don't, it's not like I love Minnesota or anything. So they're, they're a little bit more secondary for me, but I, I don't, I don't mind it. And I'm just going to double check that the roof's open in Minnesota today. Um, I, pre I presume Kep was going to get a good start, good lineup spot. Left and right. I think he's a good, good play. I'm thinking of the wrong stadium. Um, it is, it is warm and with serious winds blowing out, by the way. Um, I'm already looking at run totals that have jumped since I first did my look this morning. So, yeah, I think that you're right. Kepler, um, Buxton, the hard part is Arias who leads the league in hitting is just an awesome hitter. Just yep. has absolutely like, not like no power whatsoever. And, uh, you're paying 4.7 for guys like that. It's always makes it a little tricky for me, but you also can you potentially use Kirilov as a, as a value in the stack. So I, maybe, maybe I should think more about the Minnesota stack. I'm going to give them a little bit of a weather bump up. Um, just because of the way that, that it looks in Minnesota today. So, uh, all right, let's talk about Philadelphia and Texas, which to me feels like the absolute just stay away game that there is. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, going to the days where can we attack uh, Martin Perez? Um, uh, Philly's hitting better, so I don't really want to play Perez either. Mm -hmm. This is, um, if I'm not mistaken, this is Gibson coming to face his former team, maybe? Is that possible? Uh, Gibson is has been uh, bounced around quite a bit lately, so okay. I'm going to double check. All right, fair enough. Um, um, so I'm not getting either. I'm not getting either of that. I will say that in my uh, in a couple of runs, I, I did get to a little Philly, but that's just because that they're, they're, that that I'm telling you, they they still they still put lineups up against Martin Perez. They just all they just do, and uh, can't think of a reason why I would want to play it. So uh, I'm gonna probably just ignore it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, I agree with you. Probably stay away. Yeah, I think I'm just I'm just off of it. Um... And uh, yeah, he pitched for Texas for two years, but I mean, pitched for Minnesota for a million years. Um, yeah, I mean, 
I, I, I can't find anything to really to really want to do here personally. I don't mind anything though either. Like, it's like one of those where I wouldn't blame you for taking any hitters in this game, but I'm I'm just personally not siding with that. Maybe Corey here as a one off is fun. So this was the one thing I did right last night. Was uh, told the White Sox was I recommended the White Sox. Yep. Yeah. Um, not particularly interested in them against Gausman. Um, I think this is. I, I was want, I wanted to get your opinion on this because it's it's I'm not getting the Gausman too much in my uh, in my builds, and I'm just a little scared of why I'm not. Um, what, what do you have? Like one? He's been horrible. Wait, no, he's had, he's been horrible every, he's, he's basically been, he's just, his last, uh, okay. he's basically hasn't had a start we would take in six out of like his last five, seven. Six games. No, that's why I'm, well, that's why I'm not getting to him. Not yeah, that's good. probably what's happening. But I would, I would say that maybe this would be a decent enough time to get back onto him. And if people really aren't going to play Dylan Cease, who's one of the best strikeout pitchers in baseball, I understand it's not a team that strikes out. I understand it's a tough matchup. I, I think both these pitchers are very much in play here today. And I think it could go the other way too with a guy like Cease who, who will challenge you. Um, and I mean, he'll challenge you, but at the same time, he, he's, he can, I mean, he walks seven hitters a couple of, a couple starts back and still actually, you know, didn't have like the worst outing ever. He's got great strikeout stuff, but he can get wild. Um, I'm going to double check the pitching umpire for the, with the, the umpire for this game. You, oh, we have Eddings who's an extreme pitchers umpire. And just to give you a feel for the difference between these pitchers, it's funny because we, we're talking about Gaussman at 7, 10.2 and Cease at 9.8. Cease has a 7.5K prop, which might be the highest on the slate. And Gaussman has a 4.5K prop, <laughs> which is just kind of interesting when you think about it. So I actually think just the strikeout upside alone, as much as it scares me to do against Toronto, I think I would take the, uh, the variance and just take a shot with Cease here. Yeah, I like Cease a little bit. Um, I have him as, you know, behind some of the other guys, but um, I definitely have him playable. I have a lot, I have him sort of like um, a gallon sort of, mm -hmm. as far as my, 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 my desire to play him tonight. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get there in some lineups, but he's not going to be prioritizing my favorite player. Yeah. I, I'm still considering prioritizing him because I, I do, I do think you just, you know, I, li I like the upside and, and because he has so much strikeout upside, even when he struggles, he still tends to get there. Right. <laughs> kind of. right. Um, and getting points from your pitchers might be harder to do tonight than most nights. All right. Well, so then we get to, to New York and Houston, right? Um, Trevor Williams, just the name Trevor Williams versus Houston. I would generally want to play Houston. And I also think that 6.5 K for or kitty makes him playable. Uh, if I really wanted to, to dumpster dive. Yep. Um, I, I think Houston is going to be overlooked on this slate from just my first look, maybe not everybody, but yeah, I can't, I can't understand this ownership at all. Um, yeah. I, 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 I agree with this. I agree with where you're going with this. So just keep going. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I just was going to say like, I think that the pricing is, is maybe what's keeping the ownership down, but I do think this is a spot where you could try and take advantage and, and, and play these, uh, these Astros at really low ownership. Cause I don't think that their people are going to be able to afford all of them. And if you did, you would probably have to do a combo stack with like a Pittsburgh or a Detroit, like you're talking about. But I, I certainly think Houston is, is a is a I have them high on my list tonight. I agree with that. And this is one of those teams I've discussed where, you know, where I, I do want to find a way to 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 pay up for teams like this, like Boston or the Angels or Houston or maybe, mm -hmm. even, you know, whatever. So that's why I don't mind, you know paying down a little bit, maybe paying two S maybe two SP twos or whatever. And I think Houston could score 10 runs in like two innings against this guy. You know what I mean? Like if, 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 if things work out, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, or Cootie again, like just, just, you could definitely like make the case that, that he's a good point per dollar play, you know? Um, and he doesn't have the upside of, 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 like, of the Striders and the Contreras's and, and and whatever um i might get there but he won't be in my big one either but i definitely like i think houston's almost my favorite right now mm -hmm. yeah I, I i do like them a lot all right then we go over to uh to milwaukee and st louis um sheets what are you able to do in this game if anything it's a weird it's a i don't know what to do with it <laughs> um, well flair flair it's just flarity is a pitch limit right Yep. He says 75 pitches, which to me makes, makes him on un, him unplayable. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I wouldn't particularly want to play Milwaukee against him. Should we be playing? Should we? Shouldn't we be playing St. Louis like against Chichi Gonzalez? Well, that's 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 where I'm getting to. Um, yeah. I think so. I mean, I think I think I think that it's a uh, definitely a good park, right? Um, and Chichi Gonzalez is a very prone to giving up, uh, giving it up. And uh, the Cardinals, I always feel as though they they either have tough matchups or they score ten runs. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. uh I, I have no problem with that. So I, mm-hmm. I kind of agree. I, I don't want to play Flaherty, but I'll, I'll play St. Louis. Mm-hmm. They're all very affordable. I like St. Louis here. Um, you do have a good Milwaukee bullpen, which makes me in general on big slates want to stay away from the full stacks, but I don't mind it in this case. And their bullpen has been hit a little bit more than, than, than I think people realize lately, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm into the idea of some St. Louis tonight for sure. All right, let's move over to Kansas City and the Angels. Uh, I think you got a good argument for both sides of the stacks here. <laughs> There's a lot of hitting tonight, Sheets. What do you got here? Yeah, so first of all, I'm not playing Devers. Um, no. I'm done with that. Uh, I'm not playing Heasley. Uh, and I think the Angels, as I mentioned a couple of times, uh, are you know, one of the top three stacks on the board. Um, yeah, I have them rated number one on FanDuel. Um, and right behind Boston and right alongside of Houston on, on DK. Um, and then I don't have Kansas city rated, which, which is kind of good because that means they probably won't be that high owned. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the, I don't know what the weather's like or whatever, but I'm telling you this Denver stinks. You know what I mean? He had that one, he had the one really good game at the beginning of the year, I think. The no um, Yeah. Yeah. And uh, every time I watch him play, every time I need him to do anything, he just gets get it doesn't do anything. So I think KC could be a very interesting low on low on stack. Um, but so it's the Angels chalky spend up, KC non chalky pivot uh, maybe. Yeah. So one of the things that I'm trying to figure out, and I need to do a little bit better on this report, is is you have KC as a team who doesn't strike out because they swing so early in the count versus a pitcher who doesn't strike anybody out, and it doesn't it's hard to know exactly what to do with that. On top of it, you've got a bunch of righties against the lefty. Um, so it's, you know, it, sometimes like a guy, you know, when you get like a Garrett Cole against KC, you won't see the same strikeout upside that you might against other teams. But I, 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 sometimes chasing early in account against guys who don't strike anybody out necessarily, isn't necessarily a good thing. So I'm, I need to do a little better studying on this one. I do think both these teams are, are very strong plays. Um, and I just think that it, it just weighing them versus versus the other situations around, you know, the Angels is, isn't a, a great hitters park in general, but at the same time you have, you know, it is nicer and warm today at 70, well, warmer than it had been 77 degrees, a uh, little bit of wind blowing out. I'm okay. I'm good with, uh, with I, I, I prefer the Angels, but I, I don't mind both sides of this game at all. And I'm just going to take a quick look at the umpire got salvador and, perez under 5k against the lefty you got wit 4200 he played melendez also by both catchers yeah um and 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 dozier's against against the against the lefty you know um mm-hmm. he's only 3k and Santana, this, this, 2500 this, if you don't want to play dozier yeah this looks like a I, this looks really promising this is the kind of stack that would have been fun to do on a small slate because you could play Melendez in the outfield with Perez a catcher, and then you could play Dozier in the outfield with Santana at first base. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it would be kind of funny to do that. Although I would rather get wit- the wits in there before those guys. Um, but it is kind of funny if you look at it like that. But anyway, we move on. Um, I think these are these are arguably two of the best, maybe the two best pitching options on the slate. <laughs> it's it's a weird slate. Uh, I will I like both of them quite a bit, and. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. Manaya is probably my number one, and uh, Gallon is right there. So I, I like both the pitchers in this game. Yeah, I have Manaya right now pushing 40% ownership. Mm-hmm. Um, so you gotta watch out for that. But um, I don't care about it. On I just want to play the better pitchers. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, and uh, but he's rated number one for me by a pretty decent amount actually um, overall. And um, I, I mentioned Gallon earlier. I just don't have him quite as, as high as some of these others. So I have him like on the cease level, you know, and probably below uh, Cortez, Strider, Contreras. You know, those are all different prices, you know, whatever. But um, 
Gallon, Gallon's, kind of, Gallon's kind of in my uh, Kevin Streelman list right now. He, kind of, he was kind of whining about calls a couple of, couple, couple of starts ago. Didn't really, I didn't really appreciate that. So I have to skip one Zach Gallon start. He was a little bit of a baby. I would like to skip him today. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's looked very good. But at the same time, it's, I don't have a whole lot of guys I really like on this slate. Right. Um, we, we could have used any one of the pitchers last night that were out there. And, and there's just not, there's nobody out there who really stands out the same way those guys did. Um, is there anything else from this one? I don't think there's any hitting, right? I think we just move on to Seattle, Oakland. Yeah. So I, I took, uh, you remember, I took kind of a, kind of a, kind of a weird shot with, with Marco Gonzalez. Um, mm-hmm. and I didn't do that, you know, that great didn't do that poor, poorly, whatever, but he's, he's, he's a little too expensive for me to, to do it. I, if I, I got him like 6k again or something like that. I might try it against Oakland, but, um, I don't think I'm going to quite get there. And Caprillian always kind of shows up as like a, as kind of a cheapo SP2 that you might want to play. Um, is, I mean, who's better? Is he better than Fetty at the same price? Um, uh, you don't have to play any of them, obviously. Yeah. Um, so I'll pro- I probably am going to gonna do that. I'd probably play neither of them. Um, and I'm probably not going to play. Why do I have this feeling this game just wins the slate? You know, what I mean, it's one of these teams that freaking just goes off for ten runs somehow. Um, but like right now, I don't think I'm quite getting to this game. I'm just gonna hope this game doesn't exist. Yeah, I like the Mariners um, a little bit. Not crazy about it, but I think that look, it's it's almost we almost never get weather like this in, in the Bay Area. It's almost ninety degrees in Oakland. Um, a slight wind blow. It's crazy heat wave going on. We're, and we went for, we're going through a major heat wave over here and then it's supposed to be thunderstorming in a couple of days. So it's just a very strange, uh, a global warming is real. Um, but I do like, uh, I do like Seattle a bit just, uh, at first glance, but I, it's a little, little too big of a slate for me to prioritize them ahead of some of the other stacks that I prefer, which, uh, I guess in some, in summing it up, it's going to be the, the, the main ones I'm deciding between are the, the Washington, Washington, Pittsburgh, Houston, LA and KC game. And then I'm I'm deciding I, what I want to do with with Boston, Baltimore, and Atlanta. That's that's what I might figure out by later today. That I'm not you know I'm not sure what I want to do with that one yet. So that's Casey, Casey, and Houston are my favorites right now, okay. given given what I think ownership is going to be, and given given whatever you know, mm-hmm. not just what's going to score the most, but I, I would you know I, I think that those two are are, are sneaky enough. Um, okay. And as far as pitching goes. <sighs> probably I'm probably <laughs> I like I said I'm probably gonna do something like I up I have up here on the board you know maybe go chalky with the pitching and play Mania Contreras not that neither not that this is a lot you know what I mean like who, who the hell is Contreras to be 20 like you said 20 percent owned on a 15 game slate you know right. for 600 hours more than he's been you know what I mean um um but I'm looking at my options it's either him or maybe Strider I think yeah. it's going to be, that's what's probably what it's going to be. It's going to be probably Mania, Contreras, Strider, some combination of those three as the, the, the chalkier version of my pitchings. You know what I mean? Um, if I wanted to, you know, play like Boston or the Angels or something like that, I might do something funny like, like you said, like, like Cease or like Gausman. You know, um, I don't think there are variations where I really get to Cortez, actually. That's it's, it's interesting um, because if I'm going to play Cortez, I, I, I really just think Minaya probably outscores him. You know what I mean? I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, I have my note on Cortez as being only with one of the other high sp- you spent, like the guys who can really destroy the slate, like like Minaya, like like C's. Okay. Um, well, why is it? What, what's the logic behind that? Because I think that him, you're asking a lot for him to go out there. And I mean, the Yankees will okay. go to their bullpen faster than a lot of these other teams will. Right. And also there's just, I, I mean, you, I mean, you can look at it in his starts. He, he, but he, right. he does have the upside. Don't get me wrong. I just think the other guys outscore him enough of the time, including guys like Strider, where, yeah. where I, I think that it's even, you know, even if he pitches well, like, and like he pitched well the last time out and, uh, against the same Tampa Bay team and only at 18 fantasy points, which by the way, might get it done today. Um, so I do, I do have, uh, uh, I do have Cortez on my list, but my favorites are bizarrely like 
Manaya, obviously, Strider, and C's right now. Um, I actually do like Marco Gonzalez a little bit tonight. Okay. Um, and I have Gallon there. And then I'm deciding on Joe Ryan and Contreras. Those are the two that I've got question marks. But I don't feel great about a lot of these pitching, which is going to lead to a lot of Manaya ownership across the board because yep. – it's the one guy who, who like, the, everything seems to make sense for him in this spot. Like, it's a good matchup. There's not that many other guys out there. He's under the 10K. I think he's going to keep climbing in terms of ownership. He had a bad time out last time against the Cubs. Uh, tough win game there. But I just think that the strikeout upside is enough to where he's got enough of a floor, enough of a ceiling, to where he's clearly my number one as of right now. But I, I, I am going to probably have season a big buy-in today just because – it's really weird to do that against Toronto for me. You know how much I love Toronto, but I just think that he's uh, the strikeout upside is just so it's, I think it's significantly higher than everybody else. I'm just looking at all the K props on the day and he's at seven and a half striders at six and a half, nobody else above five and a half other than those two guys. And I don't, that's almost, that's pretty hard to do on a, this big of a slate. So, uh, the, the, and even Manaya is only at five and a half. So I, I definitely am, uh, probably gonna be mixing some pitchers up or mix, mixing some pitchers around today uh for what it's worth you do have eddings in that game i mentioned with c's which does help them just because that any little boost you get even if it's a couple a couple pitches a game uh that could be a couple walks because that guy gets really really wild uh c's so uh, i think c's and mania like i'm probably going to get together in a, in a big buy-in lineup that is my first look okay all right. Uh, anyway, guys, good luck to everyone today. Uh, I will be live. Sheets, are you going to be around at 6 Eastern? Uh, I will let you know. Okay. So if she, I'll be there no matter what. Sheets will hopefully be there. And uh, again, congratulations to Rody and let's kill it today, guys. Good luck, everybody. All right. See you later.